She's ram jammed in there, just like Black Betty. This evening on In the Woodyard, I'm gonna attempt to load my tractor into my dump trailer. Now, I've never done this before, so I don't know if this is gonna work, but I think it will. So the first thing I did was I put on my jack stands in the back, because I just got those, Tony got those from me from uh, Thumb Trailers. They were nice enough to give me a set, because I didn't have any, so I put those on. And I got my ramps out and I put those on, and I measured the trailer, and it is 144 inches. And I took off all my goodies on the back of the trailer here, and I bungeed up um, my draw bars, I mean my uh, three-point hitches up. So I got those out of the way, and I measured from the back tire all the way to the front and I took my bucket off and according to this I got about three inches to spare so because 12 feet well I might have four inches to spare 12 feet is like right here so I think it's just gonna fit so we shall see so I'm gonna give it a try um, the reason I'm loading it up is I broke my uh, my loader arm uh, lever, the third function lever. I got it all taped up right now so I could still use it because I broke it right here. There's a, a cutaway where the electrical wire goes through that dives into it and goes up into the, the hole up into the controls here. I'll show you that once. I, if I get the tractor in, I will uh, show you what it looks like. It's broke. They're going to replace this. It's under warranty, but I got to get it there. So if this doesn't work, I'm calling Tony. I'm going to come get his trailer. He said I can use it anytime I want. However, I got to drive 40 minutes to go get it, 40 minutes back, load up the trailer, take the uh, tractor in, have him fix it, bring the tractor back, take the trailer back to Tony's. And so it's a lot of extra running around. So if this works, I will be able to take my tractor in for service with my dump trailer. I'm going to back it in because my back tires are weighted and I'm going to try to get the weight up more to the front instead of to the back because I don't want to be... Uh, light on the tongue. I want a little more tongue heavy, so should work. So I'm going to put my ropes down for transporting. So we're going to back it up and we're going to see what happens. So wish me luck. there so there I got about an inch to spare on this side and I got about two inches on the, on the left still good Put it in four wheel drive. I got no traction on the. Uh, I got no traction on the back. It just spins. Take a look here and see where I'm doing. Come on. Yeah, I got to move over just a little bit. I got about three inches here and about a half an inch over here. It should just clear though.
That's as tight as she gets. I gotta move this bar. That it holds the uh, cover over the top. It's kind of in the way there, so I gotta pull ahead and either take it off or loosen it up somehow. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So here I'll show you how much how much room I got. I got a little bit of room here. It's pretty tight right here, but what I was worried about was this nut right here sticks out. And I cleared it by about a half an inch right here on the back tire. As you can see how little room there is back there. It's uh it's tight. There's just a little bit of room, which is good. But I think I gotta take this off because the tire's hitting it and it's bending it. So I take this whole pipe out, I can strap this down with the bungees and I can back right up tight to the back here. And that'll give me another couple inches too. So that is what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna take that thing off right now. Okay, it is in. So now the next thing I gotta do is secure it. I gotta fasten it down. I got some tied on um, chains I got to put on and uh, I'm going to lower this down now and just see if when I lower it all the way down if it clears the gate here so we'll see what happens all right let's lower it down see what happens here according to my measurements I should clear it by about two or three inches Ooh, she's just gonna fit sweet oh yeah I got a lot of room I got at least four inches there that's pretty sweet. Nice. Okay, well, now I am going to close the doors. Let's see what happens. Oopsie, gotta move you guys a little. There you go. I'm glad I'm doing this now and not in the morning because I'd like to get on the road right away. Get it there. Sweet. It really can't go anywhere, which is really nice. I got about two inches on this side, and over on this side, I got about one inch. And then into the back here, I literally have maybe four inches. There's about that much, I'll show you. There's hardly any room for it to really even go anywhere. So that's nice, it just fits. And I did not know that it would fit this well. Of course, I could put my bucket or any other implements on, but there it is. So yeah, all I gotta do is go underneath there and secure it down now. So I'm gonna block it, I'm gonna block the tires. I'm gonna block the back here. I'm gonna throw a couple chunks of wood so it really can't go back at all against the door. And I'm gonna block this. And I've got D-rings in all four corners, so I'm gonna I'm gonna secure it into the back. I have to crawl underneath to do that, though. I knew I would have to, so works better than I thought it would. So that is cool to know that I can haul my tractor if I need to. So my plan is is that if I ever want to take this to go do a job, I probably have to load the bucket or my grapple into or grapple and bucket and a grapple into my truck. So there it is. It is in. Another thing that I know that I can do now, which is really nice. I'm really glad I got these jack stands. Although I don't think it, they, I needed them that much. Um, to get them on, I had to jack the trailer. What I did is I put, I put my ramps out here and I put these timbers underneath it so it was at an angle. And then I just backed up the trailer so I could get high enough because you got to put the ramps in from the bottom. I mean, the, the jack stands in from the bottom. So that's what I had to do. So I'm going to raise those up right now before I forget about it. So now I'm going to leave these on here for now. Ooh, that is locked in. So, I gotta think about that now. How oh, am I gonna get that off? That's locked in. I got all that weight on there. Didn't think of that. Not too bright sometimes. Well, I can pound it out. I'm pretty sure I can get the pin to come out. It's really tight though. I think I'll just dig a little hole down there in the gravel. I'm glad I did this on gravel. So I'm gonna go get my shovel and dig a little hole so I can loosen it up. And that's I'll just dig this out a little bit here so I can get the pin out. Okay. 
still tight. She's ram jammed in there, just like Black Betty. There we go. I think it's loose now. Now, one of the nice things about taking it, I do not need to take my ramps because I do not need to take the tractor off while I'm there. They said that uh, I can leave it right in the trailer and they can work on it right in the trailer. So they said it wouldn't even take too long. They said less than an hour they'd have it done. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna show you my tape job I did. I'm gonna take it all apart so you can see what it looks like with the actual broken, um, rod there or lever rod thingy okay all right i'm in the captain's seat now i will i'll show you my cobble job that i did here um what i've got is it broke right in here i'll show you once i get the tape all the way off but uh i've got a couple bolts and a couple rods that i, I ran up just to kind of join it because i had to finish what i was doing i was spreading gravel when it broke and i finished that and i was able to uh do a few little things that I needed to get done and then I called them right away and they had to order the part and it took I don't know like three days to get uh, they're all nice about it it's under warranty but I just got to get it there because uh, I can't do the work unless it's there and that's the bad thing about having a tractor as a lot of you know is that unless you're a mechanic and you can fix everything yourself you got to get it there because if they have to come and get it there's always fees and I think one way for me is like 250 bucks because I'm about 40 minutes away. So if they had to come get it and bring it back, it'd be 500 bucks, which is ridiculous. The good thing is, is that now I know if I have to, to take it in for service, if something major happens other than you know, the regular maintenance, I can um, load it up in my trailer and I can get it there. Even though I have access to Tony's trailer, he's got a really, really nice, uh, hauler that I, I can put the tractor on without having to take any attachments off that I can use anytime. At least that's what he says. I'm sure I, I could. <laughs> and uh, my brother also has a trailer that I could borrow. My brother uh, Eric lives about an hour and a half away. I'm like an hour and 35 minutes. So I could go there and I could get that. Um, and I could, but I got to run there and get it and then run back. So the fact that I can put it in my trailer, even though I got to do a little jockeying around and goofing around with, you know, taking some of the stuff off, um, it's good to know that I can take care of getting it in. So you can see there's one bolt already, you can see, and then there's a big spike I think I got right here. I put on there to give it some strength because it's, it's probably like three quarters of the way uh, broke off in the joint. So I used zip ties underneath to kind of hold it in place while I taped it. And I used a whole roll of electrical tape on here. Okay, so now I'm going to cut away all these zip ties. I put these on in the beginning to kind of hold it, play, hold the little rods and bolts and things I put in place just to kind of stiffen it up so I could finish what I was doing. Well, it did work, but it's uh, to me this is kind of a design flaw that they got this cutaway here for the the electrical part, and uh, it basically creates a real weak spot. So there it is, you can see right here, the brake. It's, uh, it's cracked all the way from there to there. So it's a good half an inch. And it's also cracked on the bottom about a half an inch from, whoops, from outside to I don't know, right about here. I guess I can feel it where it's cracked. So all it's all together is this little piece right here. So it's real loose. And I took pictures of it and sent it to them to make sure that I had the right part. That's what they wanted to do. So there it is, it's broke. I guess it's a pretty common thing, but to me that is a real weak point. So what I am gonna do is if the replacement is exactly like this with this cutout, 
obviously it's not very strong and I'm I'm not that rough on it where I'm jamming it I mean I'm sure I was sometimes but I am going to if, if this is the same design on the next one I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put a, a tip of a, a bolt right here and then right into that bolt and then right into here and I'm gonna run it up and have them and angle them kind of like I did this piece right well let's see if I can get one right here I've got one this piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this which you shouldn't have to do but I don't want to break it again and then I will tape over that and tape it on real solid so that because this whole thing moves this whole the whole function moves here because I don't want to break it again so I will do the same thing I'll just take off the head and I'll bend three bolts so one is here one is there and then one from over on this side I bend them so they, they match just like the angle that this lever is and uh, get it so that I'm not going to break it again so I don't want to take do all this goofing around and taking it in if it breaks it again even though it's under warranty so there it is so that's what's gonna happen tomorrow so tomorrow you will see it right next after this it is the next morning obviously it's light out sun is up the uh, tractor is in it is secure it is ready to travel down the road so we're gonna take it to the uh, dealer that I bought it from and they're gonna slap on a new controller for me so down the road we go I am at the dealership where I bought my Coyote tractor at and they're doing the service right now I'm fixing my loader lever uh, the control lever that I broke and I found the tractor that I wish I had that they didn't have one of these when I bought mine obviously this is a one year newer model also it is the NX uh, 5310 um, very similar frame size to mine but I believe it can load uh, the capacity on the loader is like another three or four hundred pounds it's the next size up um, and it has uh, the four-wheel drive you just turn on with a switch instead of having a lever that you got to engage um, it's got a different uh, lever as far as your controls it's, there's a double neutral on it uh, there is a neutral in between each of the gears which is really nice for the range I like that a lot um, it's got a side mirror which is great gas tanks in the same place as mine I guess the the diesel fuel tank is in the same place as mine like I said same size tires um, pretty much the same setup in the back as far as um, the three-point and another little bit bigger big difference that I really like is your loader lever is right next to the cockpit to the seat so it's not out in front like mine is which I'm getting used to it but it would really be nice to have it really close just like the uh, some of the other series have the, the loader lever right here which I really like and uh, so it's a little bit different frame a little bit bigger setup it's kind of very nice tractor so if they want to trade me even up i would do it that'd be great so i'm looking at this it's a ck 3510 se but it's got the cab on it which is really nice and i would like to have a cab it would be nice to be out of the elements especially when it's raining or snowing and cold and hot and all that so a cab would be really nice however i'm glad i don't have one because i can just see how far these doors open and now that I have a tractor and I'm using it and I'm on and off constantly going around doing things, especially because I film, I'm on and off the tractor 10 times as much as the average guy. And then in and out of a door and closing it all the time, it would not be easy. I can hop off either side. I can access the back. And when you're in a cab there, I don't know, you're kind of, you can't can't get in and out as easily and I know you they say oh yeah you can well no you can't the door's in the way you got to open and close the door all the time because when I'm filming I will set the camera up have the tractor coming towards an area hop out move the camera get me going away then I move the camera to where I'm going I'm gonna like either be dumping something or picking something up move the camera again then I move the camera again as I'm pulling away so I'm I'm literally on and off the tractor four to five times as much as the average guy because of the filming so I'm actually glad that I got an open cockpit. Uh, plus I do like being outside, so there's that. I'm gonna go look at some more Coyote tractors down over here. Here is a NS4710, which is the exact tractor that I wanted to buy when I originally came to buy mine, because they had this one. And uh, when I got, to, uh, got here to look at it, it was already sold. They sold it like a couple hours before I got here. So I missed out on it. And I was 
I was trying to decide between the two anyway, uh, the DK that I have and uh, the other one. So there's a smaller 26, 2610. This has a loader arm right here too, which is really nice out of the loader lever. I think these are some of the same ones here. Yeah, 2610, they sell a lot of these. This is a very popular size. Here's a 4010 CK. So I think this is what Tony's got right here, if I remember right, same size as his. But this, uh, this 2610, they sell a lot of this one because of uh, the size and the emissions. So I'm thinking of an upgrade for the Woodyard. Maybe this one would do. What do you think? Think the tires are big enough? Holy smokes, that is a very large boy. That is a big tractor. Imagine those tires are probably at least five, ten dollars a piece, maybe even twenty. That's a big tractor. <laughs> they have a green section and then a blue section and then a red section. So lots of tractors here at this place. And they have, I think, six different locations. So what's nice is if you're looking for something particular, a lot of times they'll have it at a different location and they can get it, so it's kind of cool. Going back to check to see how the work's going on my unit. I've got about an acre of implements here. There's uh, chippers, mowers, blowers, uh, plows, uh, grapples, Buckets. I got all kinds of goodies here. Massive buckets. There's a bucket back here. I kind of like this. This would be nice for scooping up firewood right here. It's nice and nice and deep. You can sift through stuff. So this is something that I'm actually considering getting someday. Is getting a bucket for scooping up firewood for dumping it so I don't have to do uh, stacking. Even this nice little one here isn't too bad. That's too small though. I can handle a bigger one, I'm pretty sure. This looks like a, yeah, this is a six footer. Very nice. I have no idea what it costs, but I'm gonna find out. Oh, look at here, I could use this too. I need some pallet forks. This is like a candy store. I feel like a small child. And they have all kinds of goodies down here. There's tillers down here, more mowers, lots of good stuff. It is healed. All done, ready to head back home. So I'm just pulling out, just leaving the uh, dealership. Uh, Swiderski is their name. It's a nice Polish name, Swiderski. And uh, I was just talking to the mechanic, uh, the service guy that changed the, uh, the lever for me. And uh, he was telling me that I need to get a, a linked pedal so that uh, when I'm using my uh, tractor i get instant power you don't have to go to your control on your uh, gas or your your throttle i should say and uh he said about 300 bucks and he says once you get it he says you'll wish you had it from the beginning so he said uh, uh it's something i need to think about so he said he just put one on he said the guy that got it, had it put on he talked to him he said he absolutely loves it and he wished he would have got it right away so and i didn't know it was even a thing you could get i thought it was a feature you could get on some of the other models so when I was talking to him, he says, how do you like your tractor? I said, so far it's been excellent. He says, you know, he says, I work on all the tractors here. He, they have New Holland, uh, they have Massey, uh, John Deere, they have a little bit of everything there. And he said, these coyotes, he said, they're tanks. He said, stuff just doesn't break on them. He said, they, other than this, the thing that I did, um, but he said, they are really good tractors. And he said, just excellent. And he said, the guys that have them absolutely love them. So that's good to hear that from the mechanic that there's very little work that they have to do on them. He said, other than regular maintenance, there's really not much that goes wrong with them. He said, for the money you pay for them, he said, it's a super, super good value compared to a lot of the other tractors out there. And that's a service guy that works on all tractors. So that was a good thing. So if you like what you saw today, you know what to do, poke some buttons. I have another 700 videos on my channel. If you want to watch them, I would suggest doing that. That's a good thing for you to do. And if you can't uh, get enough enjoyment from that, I have a new video every morning at 5.30 a.m.